Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the verifying MacVerf VLAN bundle learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. We have five switches, that's spine one, spine two, leaf one and leaf three, and the MacVerfs are configured already on leaf one and leaf three. And in those MacVerfs we have host one and host three connected to leaf one, the MacVerf there on interfaces XE004 and XE003 respectively. And then we have the MacVerf on leaf three and host two and host four are connected to leaf three through that MacVerf on interfaces XE004 and XE003. And each of those hosts are in VLAN V10, which has VLAN ID 10. And then the IP address for each host is in the 10.1.1.0/24 network, and they all use VNI 5010. Because remember, with VLAN bundle, it's about isolating the hosts into their own EVI, and so that's what we're doing with this with MAC verf VLAN bundle. And then the loopback addresses. This will be important as we look at VXLAN tunnels and things like that. Uh, spine one uses uh, 192.168.100.1, spine 2 uses dot 2, leaf 1 uses dot 11, and leaf 3 uses dot 13. And so when we go in to verify this setup, this configuration, we'll look at the BGP sessions and we'll see where the routes are being passed around and you'll see those individual loopback addresses and you'll be able to know which device stuff is coming from. And the same thing with the VXLAN tunnels. And I'll point it out as we go, but I do want to point that out here at this time. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is leaf one. Let's first do a show BGP summary to look at the BGP sessions. And you can see here that we are getting some routes and you can see this is the loopback address for spine one and the loopback address for spine two. Now those devices are route reflectors and so that's why we're not seeing a BGP session with leaf three from leaf one's perspective. And these other sessions here are just for the underlay network so it can be safely ignored right now. And so, okay, so let's look at this. So we're getting some routes and we're getting some routes in the BGP EVPN.0 table, three routes. And then we're also getting three routes in the macverf onevpn one table. Now macverf one, is the routing instance that is configured that is using the MacVerf VLAN bundle. And so, well, the VLAN bundle service type that is. And so we are receiving some routes and that's good, but let's go ahead and ping from host one, one of the devices. So host one is 10.1.1.1. So host two is dot two. And remember that host two is on or connected to leaf three. So that's across the data center that we have here. So let's cancel that and then let's go to three. Host three is connected to leaf one. So it's on the same leaf, but that's good. There's still a verified communication. And then let's try host four. And host four is reachable. And host four is connected to leaf three. So it is on a different leaf than what host one is on or what host one is connected to. So things look good there. And we might see some additional routes. So I want to look at that again. And no, the routes have already passed, uh, probably because I sent some traffic earlier. And so we are still getting those three routes and that looks really, really good. And so with that, let's go ahead and then look at the, use the macverf, show macverf forwarding VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote command. And we see here that we have one VXLAN tunnel, uh, one VTEP that is, and it is being sourced from dot 11, which is leaf one's loopback address. And we can see the interface it's sourcing it from, the logical interface, loopback zero. And then we have the remote VTAP IP, which is dot 13, which is leaf three. And then we have the VNID here, which is 5010. And then we have the routing instance name. We have macverf one. And that's, that's important because we know that this is configured inside of a routing instance that is. And then we see the VTEP interface that is used here as well. And so we can then do the show route forwarding, rather, show Mac VRF forwarding interface, and we can specify one of the interfaces. 
And we can see here that XE003, it's a part of Mac VRF1, and it is VLAN V10, so that's the name of the VLAN that we named it. And the tag is 10, so VLAN ID 10. It is in forwarding state, and it is untagged, so it's an access interface. And we can look at XE4, we'd see the same thing here. Uh, it's part of Mac VRF1, XE004, V10, VLAN ID 10, forwarding and untagged. And we could look at these commands from the perspective of Leaf 3, but they would be almost exactly the same, maybe mirrored with some of the commands. So I'm not going to jump to Leaf 3 to show that. And then let's do the show MacVerf forwarding Mac IP table. Uh, and then we can specify the instance of MacVerf1. And that's right, I kind of forgot for a moment there, but because we're using VLAN bundle, it doesn't show that because VLAN bundle is just, it's all contained in one layer two domain. And so what we can do though, to have a look at things closer is we can do the show EVPN database uh, instance Mac verf one command. And we can see here what we have for layer two, because that's right with the other command, we're looking for layer three information. That's not gonna be shown here because of the service type. And so we can see here that we have the different uh, MAC addresses. And I believe this is the MAC address for host, host two, I believe. A0 is host two, I believe. And so you can see here the local interfaces, XE003, if you recall, that is host three. And then XE004, that connects to host one. And so you can see that they're using VNI uh, 5010. So the next thing I want to show is the MACVRF route table. And so we're going to do show route table. MacVerf, and then we're going to say EVPN, MAC address that is. And then we're going to grab the MAC address for host2 and copy that in here and see what we have here. And you can see here that we have this MAC address. This is the MAC address here. And then we can see it's coming from Leaf3. That's Leaf3's loopback address. And then it is a type 2 route. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to verify a VLAN bundle service type with MacVerf in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.